Hi, this is 12 Bolt Tom. I'm going to show you today how to take a 235 or a 261 with a 4 bolt perimeter valve cover and convert it over to use with a 216, 235 style valve cover that uses the two bolts on top. Uh, some people think they're more attractive, I do, and I'm going to show you how to convert it. Okay. Okay, tools that are going to be needed. You're going to need a 3 quarter inch wrench, 11 sixteenths, a 9 sixteenths wrench. In this case, a straight screwdriver. You may need a 7 sixteenths socket. This is a 9 sixteenths socket on a 3 eighths drive. You're going to need a valve cover, of course. Then over here, you're going to need a stud kit. I do offer that stud kit, but it has two proper length studs, two steel washers, two heavy nuts, two sealed washers. These grommets actually come with the valve cover gasket kit, but you'll need the grommets and then these acorn nuts that go on top for decorating. And then I like to use Primtex Ultra Black, and that's the keywords, Ultra Black, not just black. This is really good to help you seal down. And of course you'll need a gasket, which I have laying underneath the valve cover. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to put it on. Okay, so this is the the, the Candidate 261 that we're working on today, it's missing one valve cover bolt, but simply take the bolts out. And I've pre-loosened most of these bolts, so everything goes easy for me. This engine's uh, remarkably clean inside. It's dirty on the outside. It's been sitting in the barn for a long time. And uh, it's got coon manure sitting over there. You can see it on that intake flange. And you were probably wondering if you can see it in this video. I'm starting to put a turbo on it. So you can see, valve cover's loose, removed. The next thing you would remove would be the valve cover gasket, the old gasket. And you can see here, it's kind of cruddy and stuck down. Just loosen it up, pull it out, and simply throw it away and, and put in the new one. In this case, I'm not going to put in the new one. I'm just going to tell you, you have to pull it out, scrape it clean, and wipe it dry. Use uh, some brake cleaner and rag try to keep the dirt out of your engine and uh, put in the new gasket. Lay it in there. I like to tack it down with that ultra black. Put a thin layer like a sixteenth of an inch on the flat side all the way around on the valve cover seal on the bottom and then you can do the same thing on the top side if you want to permanently seal it to the same thing on the top to mate up to the valve cover itself. So in this case, we have to put in this stud. Okay, so these studs are located right here and right here. So the second one back and the second one from the back are the two we have to do. I've already loosened these. So this is going to make it look like I'm really strong, but no, they're already loose. So simply pull them out. So while I'm pulling these out, this particular engine is going in an older truck that I have and I'm going to turbocharge this and that's what this bolted on the intake manifold and we'll show that a little bit farther in the end of this video just to give it some more power and have some more fun with it. So you can see I've loosened those, pull them out. Next, you're going to take your two studs, the short sides go down. Thread them in as far as you can with your hand, I guess. Then there's two heavy nuts and two washers, thin steel washers. You can go ahead and throw the steel washers down. Put the heavy nut on and only thread it on part way. We're going to use this to drive these studs in. So grab your large acorn nuts, thread it on, and let it sink up against the heavy nut. Now use the 11 16 wrench and the 3 quarter inch wrench. You're going to cinch these two together, and this allows you to drive it in. So just tighten them against each other on both of them. And now, I can actually screw it in using the top nut. So just screw it in all the way. And 
and you don't have to torque those and you just screw them in. Don't be binding them in really tight. You're just trying to get full thread contact. Loosen your two jam nuts. Take the acorns off. Thread the heavy nuts down. Now the next step is you want to torque these back down again. And yes, you do want to use a torque wrench. And I want you to torque this nut to 30 foot-pounds of torque. So I'm just going to simulate that. 30 foot-pounds of torque on both of them. They have now locked your pedestal back down again. Okay, so now we would put in, you have the gasket placed in there. You would then grab your valve cover that you're going to use. Have the seal, it's all in there. You're going to simply lay the valve cover on. Is that pretty? So the next thing is these rubber grommets that come with your gasket kit. They push into the valve cover, and they would do that on a stock valve cover also. Next step is the stainless steel sealing washer. Just adds a little pressure displacement on that seal to keep the oil from coming out. And the next is your acorn nuts that are decorative. Now, one thing to keep in mind, these acorn nuts, they're only threaded in, you know, not all the way through. They may bottom out on you before the valve cover gets tight. If that's the case, you either need to shorten the bolt on the top side or add another washer right here. So there's two choices for you. So simply bring this down. Use your three quarter inch wrench. Tighten it down. Of course, uh, you'll need to put a breather on it, whether it's put in right here or if it's put in right here. I machine these valve covers and this particular customer wanted it on the side. I normally would machine a hole right here for inch and a quarter grommet for inch and a quarter breather. This one's on the side. So you look and make sure your gasket's in all the way around and your, your installation is complete. That's it. Okay, so I'll just give you a little description of a, a quick and easy turbo setup you can do on a, on a single barrel intake manifold, whether it be a 235, 261, 250, or a 292 engine. It, it really doesn't matter as long as it's got that, that flange. Uh, what you're going to do is they use a two bolt flange to bolt that carburetor down. Well, this turbo setup, you could have gotten this from a 1980 to 81 Pontiac. Trans Am with the 301 turbo setup. That's what this is, and this would work good on a 261 or bigger engine probably. If you want the 250, 230 engines, you probably want to use uh, the 3.8 turbo setup from like 79 through 83 Buick 3.8 liter engines. They look like this. You'll have to reclock parts. So, just to go through a little description of what we have here, here's the exhaust of the engine, and the way it powers this turbo is you'll make a U-pipe that goes from the exhaust of the engine to the inlet of the turbo, which is right here, in exhaust inlet. This is the exhaust outlet that goes to your muffler. So you bring a pipe off of right here and go to your muffler. So out of your manifold, into the turbo, out of the turbo, to your muffler. On the other side, it's made for a quadrajet carburetor. And in this case, I'm using an adapter to go from the quadrajet to a Holly tuber buy these on eBay they're easy to get this uses water heating in the intake so there's a, a nipple over here there's a nipple over here for water to hook in and out of this to heat this same as you would for any six owner engine this pipe right here is a drain line for the turbo so you on a turbocharger you need to supply oil so right here is a fitting to supply oil from the engine which is if you go from the oil galley to this fitting and then it goes through the turbo and it goes this big drain pipe. This drain pipe needs to hook up back to your oil pan to drain the excess of oil back into the engine. And it has to stay large in diameter, just like that is on the inside, all the way to the manifold, or to the uh, oil pan.
Okay, on the other side of the turbo, this is how they do the boost control. So this is your wastegate, and, and you can hear it. There's a little valve on the inside, and it's closed when it's over here, which makes you have the most boost. So most exhaust energy goes through the turbo and out the back. Whereas if you have it open, it bypasses the turbine and goes, goes right off the tailpipe. This is the, the blow-off valve or the wastegate control. It's not blow-off, off, it's wastegate control. This has a large spring inside it. I have it unhooked right now. It would normally hook up on there. It's also hooked up to the manifolds with two nipples over here, which is the factory locations. These are a real easy turbo and they'll put out about 10 PSI if you let them. But you can also limit it by lengthening or shortening this rod, the turbo pressure. I do make this adapter so you can use it to adapt this turbo onto a two bolt flange. I make this in the shop and I can supply those. Anyway, it's a quick and dirty turbo. It is a draw through. It's not the best turbo setup, but it is a turbo setup and it works. Proven to work. Jim made them by the thousands. Uh, and they used them in lots of, of those cars. So anyway, that's it for today. Bye.